It's weird if you think about it that we don't have just one holiday celebrating the Torah, but we actually have two. A couple months ago there was Shavuot, and now we have Simchas Torah. And it's not even that we celebrate the Torah on the same way on these two holidays, right? On Shavuot, what are we doing? We're opening up the books, we're learning inside the Torah, we're learning the text. And on Simchas Torah, we seem to do the exact opposite. We roll up the Torah, we put it on the gartel, we put it on the cover, and we dance with the Sefer Torah, not while it's open, but while it's closed. What's going on over here? So in order to understand what these holidays about the Torah are all about, we have to take a step back and speak about the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. If you've ever walked into a base medrash and you've seen the walls lined with svarim, you understand that there's a lot of Torah out there to be learned. And there are people who devote their entire lives to learning in yeshiva, to learning in kolol, just because there's so much out there to do. And there's so many various ma'amare chazal um, throughout the Gemaras, where, where, where chazal speak about the, 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 the severe prohibition of bittel Torah, of wasting time. If you have the ability to learn, you have the time to learn, and you don't learn, it's as if you disgrace God's name. There are even discussions throughout Gemara about whether or not a person is even allowed to work to make a livelihood, or if that's not even allowed because working is bittel Torah, it's wasting time from learning Torah. So if you look at these statements of chazal, it seems to be that one of the biggest values in Judaism is learning Torah. And every single waking moment of our lives, we have to be constantly learning. And yet, we have a Pasuk at the beginning of Sefer Yehoshua, where Yehoshua is starting out his regime as leader of Am Yisrael, and God says the following to Yehoshua. Yehoshua, if you want to become leader, you've got to make sure to heed the following warning. Lo yamush Sefer HaTorah Zemi Picha. This Torah is never allowed to leave your, your, leave your lips. And how is the Torah not supposed to leave your lips? What does God tell Yoshua? Not that as leader you have to be learning constantly, but rather, vihigita bo yomam valayla. Make sure to learn Torah day and night. The, the way the Gemara explains this is that learn a little bit of Torah in the day, in the morning, and learn, learn a little, little bit of Torah at night. There are even some Gemaras that go as far as to qualify this as saying it's enough to just say Kriyat Shema in the morning and say Kriyat Shema at night, and that counts as your obligation of learning at day and at night. God is essentially telling Yehoshua, it's okay if you're not learning constantly, you're not learning the entire day, every single waking moment of your life. It's enough for you to be learning consistently, a little bit in the morning and a little bit at night. And the question we ask for ourselves is, which one is it? Is Talmud Torah about learning constantly all the time? Or is Talmud Torah just about learning consistently? Twice a day, a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night, but that's it. So like everything in Judaism, the answer isn't going to be so clear. It's obviously not one or the other. But there's both. Because there are two aspects of Talmud Torah. On the one hand, there's Yediyat Torah. There's knowing Torah, making sure you have all the information and all the knowledge in your brain. And that's something which requires a lot of commitment. Many days, weeks, months, years. That's where the constant learning comes in. Because the more constantly you learn, the more information, the more Yediyat you have in your mind. But on the other hand, in addition to the Yediyat Torah, there's also Lima Torah, the act of engaging and learning in Torah. And that's not about the result of knowing a lot. That's about the process of constantly and consistently, excuse me, being in conversation with Hashem. And that, even if you're not necessarily learning as much, and you're not investing as much time, but the fact that you're doing a little bit every day, a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night, that shows that you're engaged in the process because you're doing it consistently day in and day out. And both of these values are important. And I'll, I'll give you the mashal that my Rebbe, Rav Tzvi K, always gives. He says, what's the purpose, let's start with Yediyat HaTorah, of knowing Torah. So it obviously can't be, the whole purpose to know Torah is just to do. There is a value in learning what to do so that you could follow Halacha properly. But if that was the case, we'd only have an obligation to learn the parts of Torah that are relevant to our lives. But we know we have an obligation to learn the entirety of Torah, even if things aren't so relevant practically. So Yediyat HaTorah must be more. And the mashal Rav K gives is as follows. Imagine a person is going on a first date. So the first couple of dates, a person is going to be spending a lot of time asking questions, trying to get to know the other person, but they aren't just going to be asking the practical and, and, and pragmatic questions. It's not just what are your important values or how many kids do you want to have? Or do you want to make Aliyah? Or do you want to have a TV in the living room or hidden in the bedroom? It's, it's all, all those are important. But it's more than just that. It's also, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? What are the things that make you tick? What are the things that make you laugh? What, what, what kind of jokes are you interested in? What kind of movies are you interested in? Even if these things don't seem as significant, they're still important. Because the more you know about a person, the more you get them. 
the more you're able to build a relationship in the future. But then there's the next stage, because after the couple has been married for 25 years, they know everything about each other already. So do we say, oh, they know everything about each other, so therefore they could stop talking? No, because in addition to knowing a lot about each other, there's also a value of being in constant conversation. And even if they're not necessarily going to be talking as much as when they first started their relationship, there's still is value in the good morning in the morning and the good night at night in the going over old facts and old information, even if they know all this. But the fact that they're talking, the fact that they're communicating, the fact that they're in consistent conversation, that is also valuable. And the same thing is true with our relationship with the Kaddish Baruch We need both stages. We need the knowing, we need the consistent conversation. And one of them without the other, neither of those is good on its own. We need the idea to ha ha Torah. We need to know Torah. The more we learn Torah, Torah being the word of God, the more we learn Torah, the more information we have in our head, the more we know about Hashem. And, and that, that, that's important in and of its own. And, and if we just try to engage in a relationship with God without knowing anything about Him, that's a superficial relationship. But it's not enough to just have the idea of the Torah, to just know Torah, but without making sure we have consistency and we're engaged in conversation day in and day out. Because you know what it's called when you just know a lot about someone, but you're not, you don't actually have a relationship with them? That's called stalking. And we don't want to stalk God. We want to be in conversation with God. So that's why there's also a value in Limut HaTorah, in making sure we're consistently learning Torah, a little bit in the morning and a little bit at night. And even if the, the, the amount we're learning isn't so much and we're not gaining so much knowledge, and even if the things that we're learning aren't necessarily new things, right? The Gemara, like we said, said it's enough to just say Kriya Shema in the morning and Kriya Shema at night. If you say Kriya Shema every day, then by the hundredth time you're saying Kriya Shema, you're, you're not learning anything new. But it's okay, because the point of Limud Torah, the point about consistently being in conversation, isn't about gaining new knowledge or gaining new information, but it's showing that you're in a relationship and you're consistently in conversation. Now, going back to our original question, why is it that we have two holidays celebrating the Torah? Well, now it should make sense. What's Shavuot all about? Shavuot is the day we receive the Torah. It's described as the wedding day between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So when you're beginning a relationship, what's the most important thing? You need to know a lot about the person. You've got to know as much about them as possible. So we open the books and we stay up all night learning just to gain as much information about them. Shavuot is the wedding day. It's the first couple of dates. It's the start of the relationship. So we have to make sure we get all the knowledge and information into our head. But Simchas Torah is something completely different. And Simchas Torah, we're not getting the Torah for the first time. We're finishing the Torah, and then we're starting it again. It's something we've done every single year for the past thousands of years. Simchas Torah is not the wedding day. Simchas Torah is the anniversary, which means we're at a different stage in the relationship. We're not at the point in the relationship where, where we're focused on, on the knowledge and information and getting as much into our heads as possible. It's important. You should try to learn Torah on Simchas Torah, but that's not the main focus of the day. The main focus of the day is, is to show that we're consistently in conversation, we're consistently involved in the relationship. The focus isn't on the end result of Yudhita ta Torah, but it's about the process of Limud Torah, showing that this relationship is important to us. Which is why, even though we're not necessarily going to be opening up the books, it's enough to just dance with the closed Sefer Torah, because it's about showing that this relationship is something that's important to our lives. You know, the, the, the verse, the Pasuk that we said is the source for, for this, the commandment to learn a little bit of Torah in the morning, a little bit of Torah at night. The verse for, so the source for not necessarily Yediyah HaTorah, but for Limit HaTorah comes from Sefer Yehoshua, where God tells Yehoshua, Lo Yamush Sefer HaTorah Zemipicha, Vihigita Bo Yomam Falayla. It's not a coincidence that we read this as the Haftorah on Simchas Torah. Rav Moshe Lechlinstein points this out, that what's happening to Yehoshua at this stage of his life it's the first opening paragraph of Sefer Yoshua. Yoshua is starting his journey as leader. And Hashem is telling Yoshua, Yoshua, up until this point when Moshe has been alive, you were able to just be in the tent. Lo yamush mitoka, oh, you were in the tent all day. You were learning Torah. You were basking in the glory of God. You were gaining a lot of knowledge, gaining a lot of information in your head. But now Moshe passed away and you're stepping into a new role. Yoshua, you're now leader of the people. And you're not going to be able to sit and learn Torah and gain as much information as possible all day as you used to do in the past. Yoshua, you're moving on to a new stage of life, which means that your relationship with me isn't necessarily going to be a relationship of Gedea to Torah, but it's a relationship of Lima to Torah. It's not going to be a relationship of constant conversation, but rather it's a relationship of consistent conversation. And for you, at this stage of life, that's what's right, and that's what you've got to be doing. And it's such an important lesson for us to be hearing at Simchas Torah, because the same thing is true for our lives. 
the past couple of weeks have been spiritually and religiously intensive. We had the entire month of Elul where we were focused on tshuva and returning to God. That culminated with Slichot, and then we had Rosh Hashanah, and then the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, and then Yom Kippur, and then this entire week of Sukkot, and then Shemini Yatzara, and then Simchas Torah, and now, nothing. Mido, right? That we don't have anything till Pesach in, in six months, and thank God Chazal put, put Purim in the middle, and put Hanukkah in the middle, but even Hanukkah is two months away. You know what they call the next month? They don't just call it Cheshvan, they call it Mar Cheshvan. Mar from the word bitter. Why is it a bitter Cheshvan? Because there seems to be nothing there. No holidays, there's nothing inherently spiritual, nothing inherently religious. It seems to just be boring and mundane. But that's exactly the point. We started the relationship already. We, we, we had Shavuos, we, 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 we had the wedding, we had all these months of Yedid HaTorah, of gaining knowledge and information into our brain, of getting to know HaKadosh Baruch as much as possible, of being in intense, constant conversation with God. But now, it's time to move on to the next stage. After the wedding, it's time for the anniversary. And Simchas Torah is kicking off the next couple of months, where we're not necessarily going to be in constant conversation, but we have to be in consistent conversation. We're not going to have the intense spirituality, the, the, the intense, all-encompassing religious life that's existed over the past couple of months with all the Chagim but it's going to be much more mundane, much more normal, much more mainstream. And we have to make sure we're inserting that consistency a little bit in the morning and a little bit at night into our schedules. And that means everyone has to do what they're able to do. Don't be lazy. Don't do too little if you're capable of more, but don't, you don't have to push yourself too much if you're capable of less. Everyone has to know their capacity. If you're able to learn for an hour in the morning and an hour at night, that's great. If you're able to learn for half an hour in the morning and half an hour at night, that's great. If you're able to learn for five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night, that's great. But the point is that you're learning something in the morning and learning something in the night because that shows your consistent conversation with the Kaddish Baruch. Let's use the message of Simcha's Torah, the anniversary, not necessarily the constancy, but the consistency to kick off these next couple of months. So even though they may seem void of any explicit religious experience, they really empower us to engage in our consistent relationship with the Kaddish Baruch. They remind us that we aren't just a young couple on our honeymoon, but us and a Kaddish Baruch, we're an old married couple who doesn't necessarily have to be in constant conversation all the time. But we say good morning and we say good night. And there's so much love hidden in those two statements. Everyone have a great day, a chag and a powerful next couple of months. Bye.